Hi, I'm Marco from IOGear, and I'm here to share some tips for setting up your Keymander. In this video, I'm going to show you the best way to set up your new Keymander, keyboard, and mouse adapter for Xbox One and PlayStation 4 game consoles. Before we get started, I should mention that Keymander is also backwards compatible with Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, so these instructions work for those consoles as well. Okay, let's get started. Technically speaking, Keymander can be connected and played right out of the box. However, this video is about how to get the most out of your Keymander. And for that, we need to set up using a PC. Now, the very first thing you should do after opening the Keymander box is to upgrade the firmware to the most recent version using our Keymander software. So we will need to connect our Keymander to the PC. There are too many USB cables included with the Keymander and you will need them both for the PC program. Yes, I did say mini USB, not micro USB. Don't ask, let's just move on. First thing you need to do before setting up Keymander is upgrade the firmware to make sure you're running the most recent version. You will need to connect one of the cables between the mini USB port marked PC on the Keymander and USB port on your PC. The Keymander requires a second cable connected for power during PC programming. So connect the other cable between the mini USB port marked power on the Keymander and another open USB port on your PC. Our console is next to our PC, so instead of connecting to the Keymander power port, we're going to connect the second cable between the console and the Keymander's game port. This gives us the benefit of being able to make adjustments on the fly while we are gaming. After the Keymander is connected to your PC, download both the Keymander software and firmware from the Keymander page on the IOGear website. On the page, you will see three downloadable files for software, firmware, and a sample profile group. Download all three to the same location in your PC now, but we will cover what to do with the sample profile group later. Sorry, the software does not support Mac at this time. Now that you've downloaded the files, unzip them and run the software exe file beginning with Keymander SW. Click Ready on the Keymander splash screen, then click Help. Click Firmware Upgrade and browse to the exe file beginning with Keymander FW and click Open. Once the Firmware Upgrade screen opens, click Next and follow the prompts until the upgrade is complete. Let's go over how the Keymander connects to the game console. To use Keymander with your console, you need only one of the mini USB cables connected between them. But as you can see, I have a second mini USB connected to the PC as I will be using it to dial in a game profile later. Connect your keyboard and mouse to the Keymander ports labeled keyboard and mouse. Here's a cool tip for anyone that has their console set up in the same place as their computer. You can skip the keyboard and mouse connection to the Keymander and use the play mode feature by pressing F12 to pass the keyboard and mouse functions through the USB cable connected to the Keymander. This saves having to have two keyboards and mice. Now we need to connect a controller, so here's where the setup may change a little bit depending on your console. If you have an Xbox One or PS4, you will need to connect the wireless controller to the Keymander's gamepad port using a micro USB cable. For Xbox 360 and PS3 users, you will need an original wire controller and connect it to the Keymander's port labeled gamepad. If you are unfamiliar with the micro USB cable, it is the same type of cable used by most cameras, Android phones, tablets, and most new small electronic devices. It's important that the micro USB cable is a charge and sync cable and not just a charging cable. If it's only a charging cable, it will be missing the wires needed for the Keymander to work properly. Now that the controller is connected to the Keymander, press the X or PS button on the controller to turn on the console so you can begin gameplay. Before you start gaming with Keymander, you will need to first set up a profile for the game you're going to play. With your PC connected to the Keymander, open the Keymander PC software and click the settings icon. It's the one that looks like a gear in the top right hand corner. In the box labeled Set Mouse DPI, enter the maximum resolution of your mouse. The Caliber Gaming mouse I'm using has a maximum resolution of 8200 DPI, so I'll replace the 2000 DPI default value and click OK. If you don't know the actual resolution spec of your mouse, just leave the default value in place. Next, select the profile to set up. You can create a new profile and change the default button mappings as needed. But to make this a little easier, I'm just going to import the demo profile group that we downloaded earlier. Click on File at the top of the window, select the Import, then select Group, and browse to the location where you saved the demo profile group. The demo group will populate 8 profiles, with 4 profiles for Xbox One and 4 profiles for PlayStation 4. Now select the game you have from the profile list for your consoles, and double click the area over it with the F button number. If you have an Xbox One, make sure you select an Xbox One profile, and the same goes for PS4. If you do not have one of these games, you can check our forum at keymander.iogear.com and see if we have a profile available for your game. If not, it is very easy to set one up or modify one of our existing profiles, as I'm about to show you. 
I'm going to use Call of Duty Black Ops 3 for our example, so I'll click the F1 tag. The F1 profile now has a green box highlighted around it to show this is the profile I'm about to edit. For demonstration purposes, I'm also going to make this default profile by double-clicking the F1 label. The red tag indicates it is now the default profile, and I'll explain a little more about this later. By the way, if you have an Xbox 360 or PS3, you can either create a new profile or simply convert an Xbox One or PS4 profile by clicking the Change Gamepad tab, then Save it. It is important to note that even if you convert the same title from one console to another, the button functions should be the same, but you will still have to dial in the mouse sensitivity and dead zone settings, as I will show you later. I've loaded the game and just signed it into my profile, so I'm on my main menu. The next step is one of the most important, so I suggest you do it before making any changes on the key manager. Open the game setting menu and increase the look sensitivity to maximum. Since this game has separate horizontal and vertical look sensitivity settings, we will increase them both to maximum so that we get the best possible performance from our mouse. Your mouse movement may be excessively slow or have poor response if you forget this step, so make sure to max out the in-game aim look sensitivity. Now go to the game's button layout screen so you can see all the controller functions, which makes it easier to map the buttons to the keyboard. Going back to the Keymander software screen, click the tab labeled button mapping to bring up the controller view. This screen is where you set the key bindings, which basically means mapping the controller buttons to the keyboard and mouse. If you came from a PC gaming background, you already know W, A, S, and D are the default keys for movement, and the mouse is used for your aim look direction. The current key bindings on the demo profiles are set up for the way some of our staff members play, so you can give them a try and see how they work for you. If you want to make changes, it's as simple as selecting the command you want to change and selecting either a keyboard key or a mouse button where you want the function mapped. One of the cool parts of having both the PC and the console connected during setup is being able to test your settings during live gameplay. After you make any change, press the simulation button before saving and the Keymander will cache these settings so you can play using them immediately. Press F12 on the keyboard when done to end simulation. If you like the settings, you can click save to update the profile and then click Upload to send the updated profile to the Keymander and begin play with it. If you don't like the settings, you can keep making changes and using simulation until you get them just right, then save and upload. Now, here's something you should know. If you are making changes to a profile that is not the default profile, let's say you're changing the F7 profile but F2 is set to default, after you upload the Keymander, it will automatically divert to the default profile. So in this example, it will change to F2. You must remember to switch back to F7 after you upload, or double click F7 to make it the default profile, then click upload before you begin making changes. The sensitivity tab lets us make changes to mouse speed for aim and looking around. As you can see, you can have separate aim look sensitivity and aim down sight sensitivity, which I prefer for games like Call of Duty so I can slow the movement speed when using the scope to get a clean headshot. You also have the option of clicking the same as checkbox to use the same aim look setting for aim down sight as well. The X and Y adjustments representing the horizontal and vertical axis views can be unlocked and independently adjusted for advanced users, but I recommend keeping it locked. The in-game acceleration slider affects the amount of physical mouse movement versus on-screen movement to help account for acceleration or negative acceleration built into console games for analog sticks. As you become more familiar with using Keymander, you can use this setting to better dial in your gameplay. Moving the sensitivity sliders increases or decreases the aim look speed of the mouse. So try these settings and adjust using the simulation mode as needed for your style of play. The dead zone setting is also very important to getting the best performance with your mouse. Every game has a slack area or dead zone built in that basically ignores analog stick movement within a small zone around the sticks. This is how game designers try to prevent old or drooping analog sticks from causing the game screen to move when no one is touching the controller. And I'm sure many of you have already seen this happen. While having this dead zone is okay for using analog sticks, it makes the mouse feel slow to respond or choppy when playing with Keymander, so it needs to be eliminated. The demo profile should already have the dead zone set, but I've changed this profile so I can show you how it works. Click the edit button and move the mouse over the green ball on the Y axis, and you will see two arrows appear. Click the up arrow until the screen view starts slowly moving upward, indicating the vertical dead zone has been eliminated. Now do the same thing with the horizontal and the diagonal dead zones and click OK. If you have set separate aim down sight sensitivity settings, make sure to set the dead zone for ADS as well. This will ensure that small aiming movements with your mouse are properly registered by the game. The curve setting lets you change the relationship between the increase in mouse speed and the increase in aim velocity in the game, but I recommend keeping the stock settings for now. The macro settings tab allows activating multiple controller commands with a single key or mouse button press. 
In the Black Ops 3 demo profile, the forward left side mouse button has been conveniently mapped to activate the character's special ability, which is normally only activated by pressing the left and right controller buttons at the same time. Macro settings can make complex commands much easier to pull off in-game. If you add any macro commands of your own, don't forget to save the profile and upload it when done. What we've covered here should be enough to get you up and running and destroying the competition in no time. If you still have questions, feel free to give us a call, send an email, log into our chat, or check out our forums at keymander.iogear.com.